the new Springfield Armory Hellcat. Let's check it out. We're going to compare it with the SIG P365. Guys, when SIG came out with the P365, it was definitely a game changer. Most people were carrying either a single stack 9mm like the Shield or the Glock 43, or they were carrying a subcompact double stack like the Glock 26 uh, or a lot of other just subcompact pistols. And then they came out with not only a small pistol the same size as your Glock 43, but it carried 10 rounds instead of 6 and that was a big switch. Plus, it had extended base plates up to 12 rounds. Now, Springfield Armory has come out with their Hellcat, and this holds 11 plus one, so it ups the 365 by one round. And then for the extended magazine, it holds 13 plus one. This is the world's smallest micro-compact high-capacity pistol. Another great thing about the Hellcat is you can get the OSP version, which has the slide cuts, and you can put one of the Shield RMSs or one of the JP Enterprise red dots. Springfield Armory did send the Hellcat for this test and evaluation, uh, also with the Shield RMS, which does not typically come on this pistol. So guys, while we're going to do a full review on the Hellcat, we're going to compare it quite a bit to the P365. Because inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, I know you want to know. I wanted to know. Uh, so when SIG came out with their P365, uh, you know, it was a big plus. And it was 10 rounds in the same size of a Glock 43. Just the magic that went on with this pistol. And everything, it had to do with the magazine. And now we see that Springfield Armory has come out with their Hellcat. And this is 11 plus 1. And guys, it's the same size as the SIG. And I mean, when I say same size... There is very little difference between these two. Uh, one difference is about a quarter inch longer slide, if you'll see it right here. But the grip itself with a flush fit magazine is pretty close. In fact, it may even be smaller with the Hellcat. And so we've got two pistols that are very comparable, and then we have the Springfield with one extra round. And so this is going to be a very appealing trend, I'm hoping, from other gun manufacturers, you know, just to give us more choices. But for right now, I think it's great that Springfield Armory has now kind of introduced something to compete with the P365. Go ahead and drop the magazine. It is an 11 round, all steel magazine. Check the chamber and the gun is empty. Uh, we have a 13 round magazine that also comes with it with a little bit of an extension on the base plate. And so it gives you a little more grip. And when you're firing it at the range, you have a little more confidence. Uh, but the smaller grip works fine. You know, if your pinky hangs off just a touch, that's fine because this is the part that prints. Uh, and it's one of the problems for me with the Glock G43X. was this, It had 10 rounds, but it had a much longer grip. And so it was more difficult for me to carry without printing. This is, to me, an excellent size, just like the P365. But there are some features with this handgun that really surpass the P365. And then there are some features where the P365 is a little better. And so we're going to talk about each of those. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is just kind of go through a lot of the details of this handgun. And then we're going to do a direct comparison. And we're going to even shoot them side by side. So, of course, beside the extra round for the magazine, that's 11 plus 1, guys. And so that gives you 12 rounds or 13 plus 1. One big thing is their grip, and this is the adaptive grip texture. And what this is, it has a soft feel to it, even though it, does, it is textured and you can feel it. It does have some friction, but it's large pyramids all throughout, and then they're cut off. And then down in between are a little bit smaller pyramids with points. And so what that does is, while it's smooth just to the feel, if you 
grip the pistol, it actually locks in. It's still not uncomfortable, still very comfortable, but yet it's just a, an advancement in grip style and design. I love that. And you can see it has the panels up here. It even has your memory panels on either side. And with a concealed carry, I love just taking my finger when I finish shooting and put it up here. Of course, you have your polymer frame. Uh, another thing that's really big with the Hellcat is the flat trigger. It does have the little trigger shoe. We're going to look at this in just a second, and we're going to compare it to the P365. The slide has front and rear cocking serrations. Uh, they're very nice. One thing, though, this is the OSP model, and that is a sight-ready model, and it has serrations on the top. And so you can go all the way around. And guys, I'm telling you, when you're gripping the gun, especially a small gun, sometimes you're gripping this area. So it allows you to get a little bit more surface tension and to be able to pull that slide back. Uh, and then, of course, with press checks, whatever. Now, you do have a loaded chamber indicator right here. You'll be able to see the brass. It has a 3-inch cold hammer forged barrel. You have a front bead that is tritium with this yellow ring around it. So it's very bright and then you have a white outline U-notch. These sights, guys, are just excellent. Uh, they're not precision sights as much as they're just great combat sights. Beaver tail right here, especially guys with big hands. Picking up a very small subcompact pistol, uh, you can get uh, slide bite, and so this really helps to keep your hand in a lower position. Uh, of course, you have your slide stop, takedown lever. Another feature is that this is a 1913 Picatinny rail. And so one of the big things about the SIG was, is when it came out, it was a proprietary rail for SIG products. And so that kind of limits you. Uh, one of the things though about this, it is a very small rail. And so you're gonna have, you're gonna be kind of limited to really small lights. Uh, one thing that I tried was the Olight PL Mini 2. Uh, this one is an adjustable base. And you'll see right here, if I push down, lock it in. Now when I bring the lever around, it's a little bit tight but it locks in and so very small little light for a very small package magazine release is right here it's kind of large so it's easy to be able to drop that magazine uh, and it is switchable to the other side of course there's no ambidextrous features on this side as far as a slide release their guide rod is also a standoff device uh, and you'll see i've got a little bit of stuff here where i've tested it and guys in a self-defense situation sometimes you can be really up close and that guide rod is going to keep this from coming out of battery so if you're up against somebody like this man it functions and guys, if you do that, make sure you're wearing safety glasses because I got a bunch of tire rubber all over my face. <laughs> now, it does again have the flat face trigger. We have a trigger safety right here, so you have to really have your finger on the trigger for it to fire. Uh, we're going to look at the trigger action. Take up a little bit of resistance, and then a nice, crisp break. Reset right there. With the P365, we have take up, and we have a very mushy break. Uh, very similar to the Glock and a lot of other striker fire pistols. Reset right there. The Hellcat has a much superior trigger, a nice break, and it's just really positive. With the SIG P365, again, you're getting a little bit of mush. Let's check trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Five pounds, 14.8 ounces. Five pounds, 15.1 ounces. We're gonna try the SIG P365. Four pounds, 0.6 ounce. Four pounds, 0.73 ounces. So considerably less, but again, not as crisp. And to be honest with you, I would rather have a crisp break than a little bit of just some mush. Now it's six inches long, it's four inches tall, and it's one inch thin. I mean, it is thin. And compared to the P365, it's the same. I mean, these are very comparable handguns. This is just giving us another choice. Uh, one of the things about the SIG P365 is early on, it did have some issues with reliability. And that's one of the things I didn't experience at all with the Hellcat. Now, to be honest with you, I've never experienced one malfunction with the P365. In fact, I recently took the Striker out and it's still in really pristine condition. 
And so this one is probably one of the early ones that was built to spec. They had some where the parts were a little off spec. And for a long time, I wouldn't carry this. But after about 1,800 rounds now, guys, this gun has not malfunctioned. Uh, one of the things that Springfield Armory has done, from what I understand, is they have shot about 30,000 rounds through the Hellcat, testing them uh, without any kind of major malfunction. Now the slide has kind of a matte finish, the barrel has a melanite finish, and inside the internals are melanite as well, so it's going to give you a real slick hard surface. There's a little bit of a cocking shelf right here, and of course you have your adapter plate, which accepts the shield RMS, and actually Springfield sent one of the shields mounted onto this pistol when I first got it. But I wanted to compare it directly to the P365, so I took it off, but you can see how thin this red dot is. Now with the Glock 43, this is a one round extension. So we do have seven rounds, we have 11 rounds here. The Glock 43 is actually just a little bit longer. And in the grip, of course, with the standard base plate, it would still be just a touch longer. But it's still about the same width. So it's a very thin handgun. But again, guys, we're getting six plus one. And then of course, with this extra base plate, seven plus one. We have 11 plus one. And it's pretty much the same size. Now when it comes to weight, the Hellcat, that's 18 ounces. The Sig P365, 18.6 ounces. Now guys, I know some of you are saying, well, you're just saying great things about the Hellcat. I do have a dink, and that is at the range. I want to thank Fioki for sponsoring the ammo, all made right here in the USA. Also, Lula Loaders, big thanks to those guys. Just saves your thumbs. Now we have spent two range days with the Hellcat. Uh, the first day we had the RMS shield on here. Robbie Wheaton and I came down and shot about 250 rounds. And we put another 150 rounds through the P65. Just kind of getting a feel for the handgun, seeing how it shoots. Uh, we did an initial video review on GetZone.com. I'll have the link down below in the description. Um, and so there's just some things about that review that's going to be different about this one. But one of the things about this Hellcat is that we had no malfunctions whatsoever. We put about uh, probably 750 rounds through it so far. I put 500 rounds through it today. And uh, just it just shoots well. Now, it is a small subcompact pistol, so it's going to have some recoil. I mean, that's just physics. But really, to be honest with you, even after all of those rounds, um, you know, there's a little discomfort in the web of my hand, but not much. Uh, this gun shoots very well. Now, what was really surprising though is compared to the SIG P365, we were getting a little more muzzle flip. Both Robbie and I agreed to this with the Hellcat. And the SIG just seemed to track a little better. Uh, we believe one of the things that it could be is there's a little bit of a stronger recoil spring in the Hellcat, which is actually going to give it better reliability in the long run. And so it's one of those trade offs. But this Hellcat is still very shootable. And so while both of these are going to be a little bit snappy, the Hellcat was a little bit more. But guys, honestly, this is very manageable and you need to take your firearms out and master them, whatever you're going to carry. I really like these sights with the U-notch in the back and that tritium front with the green outline or yellow outline. It just really allows you to pick up those sights very quickly. And I love that. With the RMS, you can actually co-witness with it. And so that makes it nice. Well, this plate at the top too, if you grab this in any way, you actually grab a little bit of the top of the slide when you pull it back because the slide is small. And so to me, this really aids in pulling this back and it is steel, which I love. The trigger being a flat face trigger, I like it better than the SIG P365. Uh, it's just got a cleaner break to it. And the one thing about the P365 is it's kind of similar to the Glock. Once you get to it, it's kind of a mushy break. It's kind of like <laughs> and, you know, I'm used to shooting those, but it's really nice to have that crisp, flat trigger. I think it gives it an advantage. And two, with this grip texturing, it is not uncomfortable. Uh, it's very smooth, and I'm not going to say it's soft, but it's not super aggressive. But because of the way those pyramid shapes are in there, when you grip it, I mean, it feels like you've really got a hold of the handgun. Again, it's still not uncomfortable. So overall, I really enjoyed shooting the Hellcat, 
even though the P365 had a little less recoil, uh, I think the reliability may be a better factor with the Hellcat. Now here we have the spent shells from the Hellcat, we have the spent shells from the 365. And you can see there is some primer drag right here with the Hellcat, right to the rim. Here with the P365 we have a couple that are pretty pronounced and then we have a couple that are straight on. So this just gives you an idea, but a lot of times these small little micro nines, they're going to have some primer drag. That's just part of it. But the big thing is, as long as it doesn't break the firing pin or the striker. All right, guys, let's drop our magazine, check to make sure the gun is unloaded, and we're going to disassemble. Bring back your slide and lock it into the rear position. Then take your takedown lever and push it in the up position. It's a little stiff the first time you do it. Uh, and then we're going to drop our slide, and we're going to pull the trigger. And then the slide just comes right off. Uh, here we have our recoil spring and guide rod, and again, we do have that standoff device. It is a double captive guide rod. And then we have our barrel. Again, cold hammer forged, about three inches. Uh, here you can see, now we have not cleaned this, and we've put about 700 rounds through this pistol. But we have our striker safety right here, and of course your standard striker. And of course it is nice and beefy, all metal. Then here you can see the internals, very similar to most of your striker fire pistols. Uh, one of the things though that Robbie mentioned, which I didn't really actually realize, is this is actually based on the XD series. And the XD series is very proven. It's one of the differences between the Hellcat and the SIG P365. This is a totally new designed handgun. And so we have some reliability with the XD uh, just out of a proven track record. And that's all you need to do to field strip. Now one thing I do want to mention are these slide rails. And you can see they're very beefy. And then you have your slide rails at the back that actually are a little beefier than a lot that I've seen. To reassemble, bring in your barrel, recoil spring and guide rod. Take the slide, put it back onto the frame. We're going to bring it all the way back and slide lock. Bring your lever down, drop it, test for function. And we're good to go. But one of the things I want to show you is that it does have a pinky extension for your 11 round magazine. So you can just have a, just a little bit hanging out. And then of course with the 13 round. Uh, also, there was a package when they sent this that has the crossbreed holster. Uh, and so they're already making holsters. This is a really nice holster, especially for appendix carry. It has different mounts you can use for it. And so I thought that was great that they were already getting ready to start offering different aftermarket support. The retail price for the Springfield Armory Hellcat is $569.99. Uh, with the OSP model, with the little plate uh, that you can adapt to sites, is $599, and that's manufacturer-suggested retail price. Uh, this is so new, we haven't really seen what the prices are going to be, but probably looking around the, you know, just under $500 range and could be less. With the SIG P365, I've seen a number of those on sale for about the $480 range. And so that kind of gives you an idea. They're probably going to be really close in a lot of ways comparison-wise as far as price. So guys, if you're looking for a concealed carry and you want that extra capacity, but you just don't really like carrying that thick, short grip of the Glock 26 or a myriad of the other kind of sawed off double stack magazine pistols, which I've carried the Glock 26 for 10 years, but the Glock 43 was really smooth and light in my appendix carry, but yet I was really limited with round capacity. And so that's one of the huge things about the Hellcat and the P365. And so guys, it's just one of those guns that I really think you need to look at for concealed carry. It gives you a very thin profile, very lightweight, and yet you have that higher round capacity that really makes a difference. And guys, I wanna thank Springfield Armory for sending the Hellcat for this test and evaluation. And uh, we're gonna be seeing some more with it, do a little more comparison and check it out. And then also, of course, we're gonna be doing even more with the P365. These are two excellent concealed carry choices, but I think we're going to be seeing more with this same kind of line with the high capacity and yet the really small size. Now guys, there's a lot of drama online about Springfield Armory and some of the things that happen in the state of Illinois. 
and it's very murky. There's a lot of different thoughts and you know opinions about what happened. You guys, I'm telling you, I really feel that Springfield Armory was in the dark at what their lobbyist was doing, but that's just my opinion. Uh, really, what I love now is, is that Springfield Armory has doubled down on protecting the Second Amendment. And so if we can win a friend that will actually be a better advocate for the Second Amendment, then I'm good for it. And honestly, that's the only reason that I agreed to do this review, because I feel like Springfield Armory is really stepping up to the plate. Guys, all the gun companies have done it. Ruger, Smith & Wesson, HK. I mean, they've done things that have you know, made us a little bit angry. But if they come back and they stand firm, we just win stronger for the Second Amendment. Guys, if you depend on a firearm for self-defense, whether concealed carry or even home defense, uh, having some kind of legal protection is vital. I'm a member of the USCCA. I've been a member for the past three years, and it is just peace of mind. You know that someone has your back if you ever get yourself in a tough situation where you have to draw your firearm. Uh, one thing they also help with is red flag laws and different type laws that pertain to guns all across the country. Uh, they do have attorneys as retainers that specialize in self-defense and firearms, uh, and they have a network so you can have a lawyer that's fairly local to you. They do put out a magazine that is just excellent. I mean, there's a lot of things, a lot of tips, a lot of training tips, a lot of re gear reviews and things to be able to check out. They have a, a reciprocity map where you can look and see what states that you can legally carry in. And guys, I'm telling you, if you are carrying concealed, uh, you should definitely have some kind of legal protection. Now, I have a link down below in the description to the USCCA membership page. It is an affiliate link. And I know that if anything ever goes down, I have a friend with USCCA. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Because I feel like scrumps, because I feel like scrumps, because I feel like scrumps, subcompact double spadacks. Double stacks. Double stacks. Double stacks. Double stacks. <laughs> yep. Hey, I'm doing a video right now, and my phone just was going. <laughs>